let's take a look at how you can improve your sprint start. Don't stay low when you come out of the blocks. What am I saying? Lots of coaches will say to you, you've got to stay low. Yes, you've got to be angled correctly to apply force, but low is not necessarily good. If you're just starting out as a sprinter or at an intermediate level even, you're not going to be able to start like Christian Coleman, Marcel Jacobs or Shelley Ann Fraser Price, for example. They have a lot more power and technical ability built up over years and years and years to hit the positions and angles that they do on block clearance and throughout acceleration is a specific skill that is honed over a prolonged period of training. So when you start, you need to get your basics right. And this is what we're going to focus on. In the set position, you don't want to be too comfortable. You need to have your weight slightly forwards so that you can move forwards, but you don't want to be so uncomfortable either that you feel like you're going to fall out of the blocks. Most textbooks suggest a 90 degree angle at the front leg in the block position and a 120 degree angle at the knee joint of the rear leg. Your gaze should be down at the track as well because you want to get straight angles on clearance across your whole body from the head through your hips to the back of your heel. Now when you clear the blocks you'll have something known as a projection angle. At the elite level that angle can be lower than 40 degrees though on average it's around about 40 to 45 degrees. That projection angle enables you to leave the blocks at the most effective angle. For a developing athlete, somebody who's coming to starts from the first time, they may not be able to get a 40 degree angle because they won't have the technical ability to achieve that position nor the strength to recover from that position. And this is where this idea of staying low can affect block clearance. If you tell your athlete or if you think as a sprinter that you've got to stay low, then you can get into broken positions and those broken positions are not effective for developing a powerful acceleration. You can see one of my athletes here who's really struggling with respect to her to apply force to get out of the blocks with power. Then we have a better clearance from this particular athlete here and you can see the angle through the whole body with the gaze looking down at the track. Now that's effective. That's going to produce a good strike back onto the track. Using this Antipes muscle runner shoe as a guide, when you come out of the blocks you need to pull your foot through with the toes down. But if you have the toes down and go too low to the track, you're going to have difficulty hitting the track backwards. So what you need to do is you have to have a relatively close to the track, drag through, pull through, but there has to be enough gap between the toes of your shoes and the track to enable you to get underneath you to push back downwards into the track surface. If you were to pull your foot through low, too far in front and strike at the front of the shoe, then your force is going to go upwards. So keep the toe down, leave a gap across the track surface and then you'll be able to push back down into the track surface. It's very much a stamping movement. You have to be able to press back down into the track surface whilst maintaining those body angles, that straight inclination across the whole body, gaze focusing downwards. Then you're going to get in the better optimised positions to apply force. Now, what should you do with your arms? Many coaches, including myself, have often instructed athletes to utilise their arm movements to get the movement away from the blocks. You can do that in particular with three point starts where the rear elbow is unsupported or the rear arm I should say is unsupported, other hand down on the floor and you bring that arm through very quickly as you exit the start position. That can help you project your body better but if the arm goes up too high and too long it can elongate the first step too much and result in that foot coming down, the foot coming down too far in front of the knee. For me, the telltale sign of whether the start is good or not will be the position of the foot on the first step and also if you can analyse it, the time it takes for the foot to get down to the first step. If it's 
too long then you're going to lose time because when you're in the air you can't obviously exert force so it's a trade-off between force back into the blocks and getting back down onto the track surface quickly there's research from world athletics from the 2019 world indoor 60 meter final i believe where trayvon bromel again if my memory serves me right took the longest first step which therefore put him back behind christian coleman however that's something more for well-established and elite sprinters to pay a lot of attention to but us who are starting out sprinting or those at the intermediate level we've got to get those angles right and learn to hold those angles and to rise slowly throughout the acceleration phase another factor that i want to introduce in passing is the role of the calf muscles now in terms of supporting the first couple of steps there's research that indicates that the gastrocnemius is crucial to prevent the heel from collapsing on foot contact so you've got to specifically condition those muscles in order to give you greater ability to stay on top of the foot as you come out of the blocks i'll say more about that in another video i'll also consider the length of your acceleration as well so do look out for that in the meantime if you want to know more about sprinting and improving your maximum speed and your acceleration then do check out the sprint drills playlist on the channel well i hope this slightly more detailed look at sprint starts for beginners and for intermediate sprinters and indeed for long and triple jumpers who also sprint will help you get a better start and understand crucially what really affects acceleration it's not as i said at the start of this video about staying low it's about hitting the right angles if you have any specific questions on the subject matter of this particular video or indeed any of my others then do leave a comment in the section below or through my other social media i've had quite a few coaches contact me talking about or referring me rather to various issues that they have with some of their jumpers now obviously i can't answer all of them i try to as much as i can in these videos but there are much more detailed analyses in the coach athlete videos in the members area of the channel there are now over 40 videos that deep dive into the subject matters that will hopefully make you a better coach so do head over to the channel's homepage and click on the membership button to see the coach athlete offering